Helen Keller National Center for Deaf, Blind, Youth and Adults presents an HKNC training video. This video has been designed to be accessible to as many people as possible. There are two versions of this video. One has closed captioning and descriptive visual information. The other includes a sign language interpreter. This version includes closed captioning and descriptive visual information. Communications technology for people who are deafblind. At a train station, a man with a white cane descends stairs off a platform. Scott Davert has just arrived at the train station. Scott is a deafblind man with no usable vision and some hearing in his left ear. Using touch gestures and a braille display, Scott is texting a cab company for a ride to work on his smartphone. He taps keys on a device. Prior to the advent of recent advances in communications technology, Scott regularly relied on family and friends to perform everyday tasks. Now he can use his smartphone to do these tasks independently. Just this morning, Scott has used his smartphone to look up train schedules, purchase train tickets, communicate with the public, stay informed of changes in schedule, and text a cab for a pickup. At a computer, a woman shows Scott a device. Technology has greatly changed the lives of deafblind people. The purpose of this video is to highlight a variety of communications devices and features that are accessible to people who are deafblind. You might have one of these devices sitting on your desk or in your bag, such as a smart tablet. Devices with keyboards. Some you may need to purchase to access what is sitting on your desk or in your bag. This may be a braille display or a screen reader program. A man listens to a screen reader. Others function as an all-in-one device, such as a braille note taker. The deafblind population is very diverse. It is a general misconception that all people who are deafblind have no vision or hearing. Many people within this population have some residual hearing and or vision. Therefore, no one technology solution will be suitable for all deafblind people. Words. Three categories. For the purposes of this video, the information has been divided into three categories. Communications technology with universal design communications technology used with adaptive equipment, and specialized adaptive technology. For each category, we have selected a few commonly used devices, programs, and services to highlight. However, it is important to note that there may be other options, and with the constant evolution of technology, newer and updated versions may become available. A woman touches a braille display attached to a computer. Marikar is a deafblind woman with Usher syndrome. Usher syndrome is a genetic disorder causing hearing and vision loss. Marikar was born deaf with a progressive visual loss. She plays with a dog in a fenced yard. Currently, she has a very narrow field of vision. She signs. It wasn't until after college that I started noticing problems with my vision. At that time, I started having difficulty seeing the computer screen. However, on my computer, I was able to adjust the background color, as well as the font color and size, and these simple modifications allowed me to continue to use my computer for some time. Back then, I was also a BlackBerry user, and that had similar features, where I was able to change the colors and enlarge the font size. This allowed me to continue communicating with my family, friends, and coworkers. As my vision continued to deteriorate, I started learning Braille. I continued to rely on my vision until I realized I needed to make that transition completely to Braille. I then purchased an iPhone and a portable Braille display. Words appear. Communications technology with universal design. Computers and smart devices. Most modern computers and smart devices have accessibility features that many people are not aware of. These features allow you to access the device in various ways. Computers and smart devices may have the following accessibility features built in. Screen and text modifications, voice output, speech recognition, programmable visual, audio, and vibration alerts, closed and open captioning, tactile adaptations for interfacing with touchscreens, and programmable functions. 
For more information on accessibility features for specific devices, you can visit the product website. A man waves to a woman on a tablet computer screen. Chris is a deafblind man who has Usher syndrome. He was born deaf and has some usable vision. Chris is involved in a business call with a colleague. They are communicating in American Sign Language through a built-in application for video conferencing called FaceTime on his iPad. At the same time, he is opening up a document recently sent to him via email on his computer. He works the computer mouse. Chris is able to read the document using a screen magnification program and can find his place with a crossbar and flashing cursor. He clicks to enlarge the text. All of these features are built into these particular devices. Computers and other devices that do not have these accessibility features built in can be modified with adaptive software that will be discussed in the next section. Chris waves goodbye and ends the call. Communications technology used with adaptive equipment. Although many products are built with universal design and with the most advanced features, these may not meet the needs of all people who are deafblind. Additional devices or software to access technology is often needed. Adaptive software options may include screen readers, screen magnification programs, and dictation programs. Assistive devices may include braille display devices, assistive listening devices including earphones and Bluetooth with ear clip. There are several varieties and brands created by different companies with different features. Scott scans a braille display. Scott is sitting at his desk reading a news article on his computer. He's utilizing a screen reader. A screen reader is software that interprets the content of the computer screen and converts it into voice output. It can also convert the information into braille characters when a braille display is connected. Scott previously relied on voice output alone, but since his hearing loss has progressed, he uses the braille display as well to ensure accuracy of information. Words appear. Specialized Adaptive Technology and Services There are products and services that are designed specifically with people who are blind and deafblind in mind. Although these devices have the capability of connecting with other technology or keyboard to communicate with the public, they are built as an all-in-one product to be used without the need of additional equipment. In this scene, you see Maricar using a braille note-taker to take notes, receive emails, and read documents and schedule meetings on calendar. The braille note-taker can also be used for face-to-face -face communication. Here's an example. Maricar's friend is not fluent in sign language, so they are relying on a braille note-taker with visual display and a Bluetooth keyboard to communicate. Her friend types on a smartphone keypad. Braille note-takers have a variety of functions, including word processing, calculator, database, calendar, and contacts, but can also function as a telecommunication device with internet, email, and the capability of using it for face-to-face -face communication. Relay services have historically been an important way of communication for people who are deaf. With advances in technology, these services have become more portable and convenient. Relay services include telephone relay, video relay, text-based relay. Scott and others use their devices. There are so many options. There's a wide variety available. It's best to test a variety of equipment and have a professional trained in assistive technology to give you an evaluation to match you with the right equipment. It is recommended that you research these products to determine the most appropriate device to meet your needs or seek out professional guidance to determine the technology that is most appropriate. People can be creative with the technology to meet their needs. The possibilities are endless. HKNC info at hknc.org. For more information about the content of this video and other areas related to the deafblind population, please contact the Helen Keller National Center. This video was made possible by funding from the Leona M. and Harry B. Helmsley Charitable Trust. Copyright Helen Keller National Center.